We are back on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati. Lindsey Patterson, Mike Santagata here. Mike, how you doing? Terrible, but not Bengals related. Well, maybe. I'm sick. Uh, and I probably picked it up in Cincinnati thinking about the time period. But, hey, I had a great time, so I don't regret it. Man, you're getting a lot of colds lately. I'm not going to lie. You've had – I mean, you, I feel like you've been sick a couple times. Definitely weird. Yeah, the second time in, like, a couple months. I usually don't get sick. So, yeah. hopefully this means for the next, like, year or two I don't get sick. So Or maybe I'm just getting older, and that just means I'll get sick more. My immune fen- defenses are falling apart. Hopefully it's a one-time thing and, you, and you're you're good to go um, and you get over that soon. Colds can be super annoying, especially this time of year. But, uh, you know, right now, the Cincinnati Bengals, they got back to practice on Wednesday. We heard from Jamar Chase on Monday. We talked a little bit about it. There was a lot of soreness. He was going to be day-to-day. Felt like it was encouraging that he was limited today at practice. He went through his stretches to be determined on what happens when the media leaves, but encouraging that Jamar Chase was out there. He did speak to the media. He said there's no damage with his back. It's all just the soreness that he's dealing with, maybe a pain tolerance um, that he'll have to deal with. Um, Not so great news. T. Higgins was at practice today. He didn't practice. Um, He was just there. And um, Ian Rappaport, who is one of the best NFL insiders, did report a couple hours ago. We're recording this on a Thursday night that he will be out for this game with a hamstring injury. And it is week to week, according to Ian Rappaport. Uh, So we'll see what happens because it is a short week for the Cincinnati Bengals when they play the Baltimore Ravens next Thursday. But it does sound like they will be without T. Higgins in this matchup. More than likely, they'll get Charlie Jones back. I know he's been at practice, but it officially hasn't happened on the roster of activating him. Uh, You get Yoshi, who has been in a few games where he's had to step at a minimal snap count. Um, Trent Irwin, they've done this before without T. Higgins. They've done this before without Jamar Chase, and there are different wide receivers. But um, what are some of your thoughts being without Mm -hmm. T. Higgins, especially after a great game? Well, my first thought is that – I think people are very excited for Yossi Vosh to get more time, and it'll probably be Trent Irwin again. This happened against the Cardinals. I mean, everybody got excited, like, oh, it's Yoshi time. And then it was Irwin for, like, 80% of snaps. So Yoshi got more snaps than normal, like 20% or whatever he got. Um, it was more than normal, but it's it's Irwin that has the trust, and for good reason. I mean, this is a team that's trying to win right now, and I'm not trying to disparage y- Yossi Vosh. I think he's looked really good in his time, mm-hmm. but Irwin did this last year. And Irwin's a guy that we know Burrow trusts. And I know that there's a couple plays that Burrow may trust Yossi Vash in uh, scramble drills and stuff. And maybe he'll get more than last time. I just still think it'll at least be 60, 40, 65, 35 Irwin. And, hey, who knows? You know, maybe we get another Drew Sample uh, experience. You know, maybe we go more two tight ends, uh, see some more of that. I don't know. But I do think that people are – a little maybe a little too excited about Yossi Vash in this opportunity and probably if you're excited about Charlie Jones taking over in this opportunity mm. Chase would have to miss okay I'm I'm just assuming Higgins misses because when I see a guy uh who can't so he went limited practice to DNP yeah so he you, was injured in practice <clears throat> whenever you trend the wrong direction not great and I mean there's a there's a couple guys on the Texans that much their injury report list is ginormous, but uh, like Henry two Oh two Oh, he went from limited practice to DMP with a concussion. So he's probably not like that. Usually it doesn't 100% mean it, but it's already been reported to that usually indicates they're not playing this week. And with a short week next week, I'm a little worried about that because I would rather have the team at full strength against the Ravens. But with it being a short week, if he's not good enough to go on Sunday, what are the odds that he's good enough to go on Thursday? Because it's not a full, you get, what, four days in between yeah. those games? And that's tough. Uh, but, yeah, my first thought is, okay, we're getting a little too excited about Yossi Vosh again. It's fine. I hope he does something awesome. I hope, I mean, I hope he takes control of this opportunity and ends up stealing the snaps and everything because that's greater for the future. It's just they really want to win this game. They want to win right now. They want to compete for the number one seed, the division, et cetera, and they can't blow – not going to say it would blow the game, but it gives you a better chance to play the receiver who I think is currently better right now than the guy who is fun and uh, an interesting piece for the future, but probably at this moment, not the best uh, option that they have, but still good enough option that you'll play him. 
Yeah, and the thing about, uh, you know, with being without T. Higgins, I think this team, one of the things they do, and, and I'll say that, and then I'll talk about Jamar Chase. I know he's dealing with soreness, but the good news, as he had mentioned, there's no damage. With T. Higgins, um, you know, he played through the rib injury, probably still playing through the rib injury right now, and then you get the hamstring. The thing about Zach Taylor and his staff, they do manage these injuries, so I would almost be a little surprised if we see him in the Ravens game because, um, like I said, I, I do trust Ian Rappaport's uh, report saying that he's expected to miss this game and look at the hamstring injury. You have to be careful with this. He's a wide receiver and it could be something that takes a little bit longer. Maybe, maybe it is a few weeks and then you get the mini buy with Thursday night football for T Higgins. You want him long-term um, because there's still plenty of football left to play and, and it'll be interesting how they manage that with Jamar chase. I think there's a little bit of optimism because if you were without Jamar chase and T Higgins, I, I would be pretty, pretty worried. I know they had the tight end step up on Sunday night football, but look, it's a different cat. Um, I, I like what Trent Irwin's been able to do. I like what Yoshi's been able to do. Charlie Jones, I'm not expecting a lot in his return, to I'm be sure completely enough. honest. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, I'm 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 encouraged that Jamar Chase is going to be out there because he is their best wide receiver and he's a tough guy. Um, but I think one guy we're not talking about, and I feel very encouraged with this player over the last few weeks, he's a third down, always has been Mr. Reliable, Tyler Boyd. What do you think we'll see from him? Yeah, hopefully they can get him rolling. Um, I think back to back weeks they had des designer plays for him and they worked. So maybe you get to that a little bit more. Maybe you know what the Texans are going to throw at you coverage wise. It's D'Amico Ryan's. They just played against the 49ers. Different defense. Wilkes is co coaching it different, but the bones are the same. You know, like the same structure. It's just different variables of what coverage they might play and the pressures that they might bring. But at the end of the day, they still like to do the same things. Some with that quarters, quarter, quarter, half stuff, some Tampa two and whatever else. They don't play a lot of single high safety as far as I know. Um, but I think you need Jamar out there. We're both assuming he'll be there, but I would, I think this would be one of those, you know, it's probably less than what probable used to be. Probable used to be basically he's playing. I yeah. think there is a chance he misses, especially if he doesn't get a full practice in. If a guy gets a full practice in, I mean, you can pretty much assume they're playing, especially if the full practice is Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm excited. I hope the offensive line does a pretty good job against this Texans front, uh, which – the Texans injury report is massive, but Will Anderson did just go from did not practice to limited. So he's trending upwards a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. their best pass rusher. They've also got Jonathan Grenard, uh, who was limited both days. So I I feel greater than 50% chance that at least Grenard plays. And I, if I had to guess, I'd guess Anderson plays. I, we, they probably feel similar about Anderson that we do about Chase. Yeah. And this is going to be a challenge. I mean, both those guys have been really good this year. I think anytime you can be a rookie and have an impact like Will Anderson did so far this season, I only caught uh, the Ravens game on film, but he really gave it to um, their right tackle Morgan Moses and Morgan Moses is a pretty good player. I think probably around Jonah level, maybe at least, I don't know. Jonah's having a pretty good year. So I'm about to say, I, Jonah might be topping him a little bit right now. No idea. Not I haven't watched enough Morgan Moses. And Morgan Moses did a, did a great job in the Bengals game too. So maybe I should <laughs> throw some water on it. So maybe he's doing better. Um, but yeah, he's, he he can give it to good players. And Grenard also, he's a guy that I think is a little sneaky for this matchup. And do they still have Malik Collins? I'm going to look that up. Well, all you have to do is look at their injury report right now because there's about there was twenty. I didn't see him on there, which made me think he would play for them. Okay, he's still he's still there. Only has two and a half sacks this season, but has a quarterback hit in all but two games. So he can still rush the passer a little bit yeah. from the inside as well. I think that's one thing you have to look at for the Texans. I know there's a lot of talk when you think about their offense. CJ Stroud, as there should be, he's playing like a top ten quarterback right now. People are saying rookie of the year could be MVP candidate. Um, but overall, you have to think about their defense too. And and I agree with you. You know they can get to the quarterback, and that's when this offensive line is going to have to step up again. They play well at home. They've lost two games at home in the last two years. Um, huge opponent. The way they've been playing offensively, really getting things going. I think you need to rely on your running game too. Do you think Joe Mixon can have himself a game in? this matchup uh so <clears throat> i found the bills game that might have been his worst game as a running back so far as a runner so far even though he was had some ups and pass protection for sure even though he did take one l but like i said like running backs take l's it's, it's fine he was yeah. he had other good reps two pancakes actually i went back and i watched 
the game a third time and I found another one for him, but I didn't post it. Uh, yeah, I, if he runs like he did against San Francisco, yeah. And he's always ran well against Steve Wilkes for some reason. Um, Wilkes is no longer in, you know, Wilkes is with San Francisco. He's mm-hmm. never been in Houston. So, but Demico Ryans, I'm going to real quick, I wonder how did he, because I don't remember him doing a lot in the Bengals 49ers game in 2021. Well, they relied on him, and that's when Zach Taylor got the criticism for yes. not letting Joe Cook. Right. Okay. I'm going to see real quick, just a quick look. Uh, yeah, 18 carries, 58 yards. That's a tougher defense, though. Too. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I don't know if they'll be able to lean on him a ton, but you're hoping that he has a game closer to the 49ers game than closer to last week, which it wasn't all his fault last week either. I thought there was too many missed assignments um, in the run game and not all from offensive linemen. There is a couple from like the tight ends and the wide receivers too. need those guys to play a little bit better. Uh, my guy sample, he was great in the run game too. Mm-hmm. He earned whatever grade he got from pro football focus, which I think was very high. So flip sides, because right now, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when it looks like their secondary. They do have a few injuries before we get over to the Texans offense. When you look at the cornerback room, I would be a little I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised with Stingley coming back yet. Um, it does sound like it's going to be more of an Arizona Cardinals when he returns the following week. He did go full today after being limited at his first practice on Wednesday. But when you look at their secondary matchup with the Cincinnati Bengals more than likely being without T Higgins, how do you like that? I was busy coughing. Do you say Stingley's more likely to be back next week? Yeah, week? the following week. I just missed the name. That's why I assumed too. Sorry. On the injury report, and I know Stephen Nelson's on the injury report, but he's had two DNPs, so I'm assuming he doesn't play unless he can at least get a limited in there. I know a lot of Bengals fans are going back. They want him to play the from 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 Burrow's rookie year. I don't know if he's going to be out there. <laughs> he deleted Stingley. that tweet, by the way. That is or that uh, that it, that's actually gone yeah. off that Instagram page now. Oh wow. Yeah, I would I would also delete that if I was mm-hmm. him. Um, oh, also for their uh, – well, we'll talk about – yeah, their coverage unit. Look, the Bucks just had a good game against them. So if they don't get home, I don't personally really have a lot of trust in their coverage to hold up. That's why I'm thinking it's mostly important the offensive line is able to hold up against this pass rush because if you give Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd time against these players, I feel like they're going to get open. And maybe – Higgins being out helps them so that they could focus more on Jamar Chase. I don't buy it too much because when Jamar Chase was out, T Higgins ate. So I think they're both good enough players that they don't need a guy, a dude opposite of them to be good. Uh, It certainly helps, but I think he'll be fine. And we've seen that too. I mean, the Browns game last year, not that the offense was great, but you know, Boyd goes down early. Higgins is out. And it's just Irwin Chase. And now you like Boyd's still playing. And I think Boyd's solid. Yeah. Um yeah, I I feel pretty good about them against the coverage unit. Um I think it's more of a 50-50 battle on the offensive line because I just think that this Texans defensive line is a little good. They're pretty good. Mm-hmm. And I think the same thing with Bengals offense. Like they're playing pretty good right now. Not perfect. They're still giving up a couple pressures here and there. You want those pressures to come slower. Uh, there's a few quick ones last week but that's the matchup i would have a little bit more worry about as a Bengals fan compared to oh man um well if not stingley and nelson who do they even have at corner like tavier thomas yeah I'm up the roster. here's here's one of the things i want to say about that you know we've heard since joe burrow was i wouldn't even say since joe burrow was drafted here i would say when they drafted t well they drafted t higgins in the same draft but the following year when they added jamar chase there was there was things you would hear outside of the building that would be Joe Burrow is carried by his weapons. Joe Burrow proved last year that he could play, he could have just T Higgins on the field, that he could have just Jamar Chase on the field. And yes, I know Tyler Boyd was out there too, but when Joe Burrow is playing at the level we've noticed over the last few weeks, he's proving that this game at home versus Texans, obviously a huge game versus the Baltimore Ravens is this guy can be put on not only in the MVP conversation, but that's why he's this franchise quarterback. Um, it, it isn't always about the wide receivers. And I know I'm saying that before this game being without T Higgins and maybe Jamar Chase at 100%, but you still have Joe Burrow. 
and give me a healthy Joe Burrow over what we saw in the very beginning of the season when we noticed that you had a healthy T. Higgins, when you had a healthy Jamar Chase, and they couldn't get anything going offensively. If the offensive line can do enough in this game, and I'm just saying about average, about what we've seen over the last few weeks, and yes, this will be a different pass rush. If you have a healthy Joe Burrow, I still think they're going to be fine without T. Higgins in this game. I agree. I, I worry when they both go out, not when one's out. Um, I looked it up. So Tavier Thomas, who's a good nickel. I think he's a good player. And I think Jalen Petrie is a good safety. And he, he can play down in the box a little bit. Uh, Steven Nelson's listed as a starter. His backup is listed as D'Angelo Ross. And Shaquille Griffin is the other corner. So, sure. I, I feel like I should trust Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd against those guys. Tyler Boyd versus Tavier Thomas. I don't know. Maybe that's interesting because Tavier Thomas isn't a bad nickel. So they've got a matchup there that it, that could swing. If the Tex, if it swings the Texans way, that could really hurt this game, I think. But at the same time, I also don't expect much man coverage from this team. So it's going to be a lot of zone. Uh, and Ooh, Give them zone. Give them zone. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do that against uh, Jamar Chase when you don't have a, a dude like a well, the Jets played a lot of zone, so I don't know if I can even mention Sauce, but uh, Sertan, I don't know, something like that, like a really, really, really high-end corner, then maybe you feel better about playing some man, although eventually you have to play man in this league because if you go into third and one in a zone, they're going to get it every time easy, and you got to man up in those situations a lot of the time. So we talked a little Drew Sample. We've talked about Irv Smith Jr. getting his confidence back, and and obviously with there being, being without T. Higgins, you have other guys who can step up. What about Tanner Hudson in this game? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, a lot of zone, right? He showed some some smarts against the zone, sitting down his routes, knowing back shoulders were coming. Um, I, I'll be interested. Mm -hmm. Definitely, think it'll be a committee again, and it feels like it's just Drew Sample as the third down back, which is funny. At least Samaji P Ryan right now. Yeah, he's basically playing the P Ryan role, and he even made a P Ryan play with that touchdown. You know, <laughs> that's one of those plays P Ryan would make a uh, Taylor Rat miss in the open field and score. And you were never expecting that on a dump off on third and long. Um, yeah, I. It's hard to be too excited because I know how down okay. I was on this tight end group just like two weeks ago. Yeah. To then be overly excited about it, I'm not sure. I think Hudson is the tight end body, and I think that's important, especially in these zone matchups. Tight ends usually feast more in zone than they do man. Um, there's not a, lot to, not a lot of tight ends out there that destroy man coverage. You've got like Travis Kelsey, and then if you're as good as Travis Kelsey, like a Mark Andrews, well, not as good, but you know, a really good player like Mark Andrews and um, maybe George, yeah, George Kittle too, those guys, they can do it. And then other than that, if you're good enough, you're going to draw a good matchup. Like you're going to draw a good corner and that usually doesn't go that well. Um, so I do think, I don't know if I would pick one to have a game, but I think they will be a little extra important this week compared to the 49ers. Like if they play as bad as they did against the 49ers collectively, that, that could be doom for the Bengals offense just because they're a little bit more important. Like those are just whatever plays against the 49ers. And yeah, it stunk to, it was a lot of, you know, you lose seven points when your guy fumbles on the two yard line. Joe was almost perfect, but his tight ends let him down in that San Francisco game. Yeah. Yeah. So everything was perfect except that you're probably not going to get perfect production from the wide receiver unit, even if we are excited about Andre Yosibash. And uh, I think Trent Irwin is a solid player. I think he gets, I think Trent Irwin just gets underrated by the fan base. I just, I, I don't think they care about him. <laughs> They're just like, I don't want that guy to play. I want my, I want the exciting young guy to play. I want that guy to play. And it's like, well, I mean, he's been solid, consistent. Like, you can't – it's not – they don't say wide receivers are, are don't matter, you know. That's not, that's not usually a saying. And maybe you could argue that Trent Irwin is, like, around a replacement level player, but I don't know. I think they trust him, and he's given them good reason. And to me, he's the fourth best receiver on the team. We'll see. Maybe it switches this week. Maybe this week Yoshivas just goes for – 78 yards and two scores or something. And I, I changed my mind. I'm like, well, you know, he just doesn't bring the juice that Yossi Voss brings. But as it stands, I think I think we're going to see a bit of Trent Irwin and the tight ends are going to be a little more important. I do think that in that Cardinals game, they did not go with a lot of 12 personnel, despite that was Higgins who missed that game. They went with 11. And I'm expecting that to happen again, where I, I threw out the idea, but I don't know. They just don't feel like they want to go 12 personnel with these tight ends. They want to use them as a collective unit instead, rather than uh, two some on the field at the same time that can scare defenses. 
Well, flip sides right now, uh, CJ Stroud, I think he's proven to be, and, and look, Bryce Young, it, it's early. It's early on in their career. It's halfway through their rookie year of their NFL season, but man, he looks like he's quarterback number one. He's been a lot of fun. He doesn't turn the ball over. He has one interception on the year. Not only is he in the rookie of the year conversation, as I mentioned before, people have him in the MVP conversation, and uh, he's playing lights out as a rookie right now. And um, he, his similarity is, you know, he, he had that comparison when he was asked um, his senior year at Ohio state, he looked up to Joe Burrow, how Joe Burrow plays the game. And some of their similarity similarities are he gets rid of the ball really quickly. Um, what do you think about CJ so far this season and how does the defense get pressure on him? Cause under pressure, CJ isn't that great. Smart player. Um, I think the Burrow comp does stand a bit. I mean, he, pretty careful with the ball, quick release, um, usually makes the right decision. Maybe not that A plus arm level that some guys have, and, but I wouldn't hold that against him. I think he's a really good quarterback and he's only going to get better. I mean, this is his rookie year. And honestly, right now he's playing better than Burrow did his rookie year. So give him some credit there. I don't think he's currently better than Burrow. I think people will get mad and start I know how some fans could get, but I think Burrow, Burrow's currently better. Burrow, top five, top three type guy. CJ Stroud, not there just yet, but I think as a rookie, he's been really good. I don't want to discredit that. Only one pick that came against the Saints um, in, you know, it. you look across, there's a couple no touchdown games. Touchdowns are usually hard for rookie quarterbacks, but obviously he has that five touchdown game last week. He's got a couple zeros and a one in there, but he's not turning the ball over, making negative plays. He's mostly creating positive plays, and he took some sacks early on, uh, 11 sacks in the first two games, but since then, seven sacks over the past six games, and some of that's quarterback-related, and some of that's offensive line-related. So I think it'll be big to see which there's so many. I mean, it looks like Laramie Tunsil will play. Did not practice. Yeah, he's going to play. He practiced. Yeah, yep. that's huge. I mean – for one, the the Bengals don't move Trey Hendrickson. So if Laramie Tunsil plays, it's Trey versus Tunsil the entire game. They're they're not going to switch that around or anything. And I think Tunsil top three left tackle in the league. One hundred percent. Yeah. So that'll be tough. Uh, not that I'm counting Trey out. I think he's that he can win those matchups. We've seen it. But um, that's a tough one. And it looks like Titus Howard went from limited to full. Would fully expect him to play. George Fant limited to full. Fully expect him to play. So this Texans offensive line is going to be fairly healthy, even though it's not the same unit that they planned on rolling out there week one. They've been playing a little better, especially it seems in well the last three weeks. You know, like I think they're playing a little better than they did before. And uh, Bengals are getting good production from the BJ Hill Sam Hubbard combo. I think that could be big in this one, but Sam Hubbard's probably out. So yeah. who steps into that spot? You know, I think Who's the penetrator in this, in this, yeah, in this text on, I think the penetrators are more important, which is BJ Hill, not to say Sam Hubbard isn't important. Can Cam Sample do the same things at a lower level than Sam Hubbard? Because I'm expecting him to start. And then I think Murphy will be the third guy. And then Osai, maybe they give him a full like 50 50 split, like they've kind of been doing, but I kind of think it'll be Murphy as a third and uh, coming in whenever Trey needs a rest. Then again, I wouldn't expect Murphy to do much against Laramie Tunsil. I, I would not really attack that matchup too much in this game. Um, I would try to run maybe some stunts on that side of the offensive line, maybe work on Titus Howard and the center a little bit. We'll see. I think DJ Reader could be big in this one because I think he has a, a mismatch on paper. And the right side of this offensive line, you know, it's a guy off the street and George Fan. And well, the right guard, Shaq Mason's good. So I'm not, I think he's. A good player. I think George Fant, guy off the street. He's playing an okay level, but at the same time, that's probably right, right tackle center, probably your two weaker points of this offensive line. Just stinks for this to be a game that Sam Hubbard misses. Yeah, it's something to monitor um, with him being out both days. He did have his ankle taped. He wasn't in a boot when he was in the locker room today, but he would have to – I mean, look – they could go limited in play, but you would have to see something out of him on Friday's practice. If he's out on Friday, he's not playing. I mean, I would feel like he's not playing. Um, you know, it's just something to monitor with, with Sam Hubbard because he wasn't out there for uh, the time being when the media was out there Wednesday and Thursday. But ankles wrapped. We'll see. These guys are really tough on the defensive line. But um, what if it's a Miles Murphy breakout game after you wrote that article? It would certainly be awesome. Get him against the right tackle. I want to see something. You know, <laughs> I want to see yeah. if he can do it. DJ, Re DJ Reader revenge game. 
That's true. I didn't think about that. Uh, did I don't think he played in the last matchup. Like, what? They played in 2020. Yeah, yeah, they played, and that was a Brandon Allen. Uh, you know, he, he was throwing heaters. <laughs> that was my favorite game to watch. It's that Deshaun year. Watson. That was a that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, he had a near perfect passer rating. He was just throwing just heat checks to AJ Green and T Higgins in that game. It was great. Um, but I don't think DJ played in that game because he missed a lot of that year. And I think that was after, I think he went out pretty early, like the Browns game in week two, and then he was just gone the rest of the season. So it is a revenge game, and I don't think he's gotten to play against this team since they chose to let him go. Yeah, and kind of moving on from, you know, the defensive line, when you think about this team, look, CJ's been a lot of fun, but it really feels like they can't run the ball. And that's a bonus for Lou and his defense because they've struggled to stop the run. Uh, but I'm not counting, you know, most recent games, but just overall, you know, the, the whole body of work so far this season is if you can't get a run game, I feel like that is good news for Lou and this unit. Um, what do you think about that matchup and what do you expect them to do in the running back position? Very stout run defense. I expect them to hold up in this one. And look, it looks like Damian Pierce is going to miss again to did not practices. So it'll just be Devin Singletary and their emergency kicker, Daria Gunbawale and whoever else out there for them. Um, I'm, I'm expecting the Bengals defense to hold strong in that department. And then if you can put rookie quarterbacks behind the sticks, you know, that's a, that's a recipe for a good game, but they have to be able to do it. And maybe the Texans will throw more often than, um, we may be anticipating just because they know that this is a mismatch in terms of the run defense versus um, their run game. Uh, we'll see. I Sam Howard's a great run stopper, though. So mm-hmm. if Cam Sample and maybe and Miles Murphy don't give that same juice in the run game, that'll be tough. I think Cam Sample's shown some good stuff in the run game. I think Murphy has as well. And I'm expecting them to at least look solid over there. I don't expect them to get smoked or be a big reason why the Texans are able to run the ball down the Bengals' throat. I think that that's the main advantage the Bengals have on this side of the ball is their run defense against the Texans' run game. I mean, it's a it's a pretty poor run game, and it's a pretty good run defense unit. All right, when you think about the wide receivers in the cornerback room, CTB has just been so much fun this year. Um, people want to put him in the conversation as an old pro. I saw on Good Morning Football they're giving DJ Turner credit, which we love to see. And I know what happened against Stephon Diggs, but look, he's played really well his rookie year so far. He's getting the start out there at the cornerback position. What do you think overall with the secondary and their wide receiver group? Uh, it looks like Nico Collins will miss this game. He's been a good player too. Two did not practice so far. Uh Tank Dell just had a monster game. He's a short slot type receiver. Not that that's all he can do. He can play a little bit outside. Uh, I think he was a fourth round pick. And he seemed to be like draft Twitter, one of their favorites. I didn't watch, so I I had no opinion on him. But I can tell you that uh, he looks pretty good right now. Uh, He's got good movement ability. And I think he'll be a – that's a bit of a challenge for like a Mike Hilton, you know, a guy that can move like that. Can they get some positive matchup going right there for themselves? With Nico Collins out, what, they're Noah Brown, who just had a big game himself. Ooh, Noah him. Brown. Yeah, remember him. <laughs> One of those. Oh, uh, always remember him. Yeah, so uh, we'll see. I, I'm hoping that, you know, Noah Brown doesn't kill them again. But, you know, what a weird guy to have that issue with. But, yeah, he was very good in that Cowboys game. Going to try to see. Who else was out there for receiving, catching the ball for them last week? Uh, well, oh, they still have Dalton Schultz and Robert Woods. Yeah, John Woods is looking trending bit. towards playing. So, yeah, so it's not a terrible wide receiver unit, even without Nico Collins. Probably not an advantage for them, but they've got, I think, Bobby Slovic, I think, is their offensive coordinator. I think he's done a good job. And anytime you're working with a rookie quarterback, being able to get production like that, that's impressive. I, I think highly, pretty highly of the Texans offense. I think of them a little bit similarly to how I thought of the Seattle offense where I'm like, this is a really competent unit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to have to actually be on your game to be able to stop them. They did a good job in the red zone of that game. And throughout the game, they they were up and down. But, you know, overall, I thought it was more good than bad. They were the stars. They, They led the charge, especially in that second half, even if they gave up some yards. So can they do that again? And, you know, Josh Allen, he didn't turn the ball over much before the Bengals played him last week. And then 
He throws a pick. So maybe maybe they can get a pick off CJ Stroud. Not saying it will happen, but he's only thrown one pick this year. I think it's their schedule. I've been looking at I mean the Ravens game. That was impressive to not throw an interception in that one. Um they played the I Steelers, mean, they played Jacksonville. Steelers, played the, the Falcons. I mean, Jesse Bates had a lot of picks on pick on uh, picks on the other highly drafted quarterback in Bryce Young. Um yeah, Bucks defense isn't at least I don't know their injury situation. Doesn't seem bad to me on paper. Their offense is what seems bad. So they didn't weirdly didn't have great production against the Panthers last week or two weeks ago. They only yeah. scored 13 points, lost the game as Carolina's only win. No idea how that happened. Only 180 passing or uh sorry. Oh goodness, 119 net passing yards, 110 rushing yards, but that's not ideal. So maybe that's a game for uh their defense has probably already watched all this, but that'd be a game I, I kind of look like. What what caused the issues here? Not that I think the Panthers and Bengals defenses are similar, but just something to look at. You know, they've done a good job of taking the ball away, and this is a team that hasn't turned the ball over much. But the Bengals are second in the league, I believe, in turnovers. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if if they can if they can protect the ball in this game, I mean, hats off to them. I mean, this is a hard defense to do that against. I just I it. it and look, I can be completely wrong, and we can roll the tape when I'm wrong. CJ's on a he's he's one of the playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Some would say top ten, top five. I don't even know where you want to put him because I hate ranking, but he's playing really well. And it's his rookie year. There's just something about Lou that I trust in this defense, and just the way they've been able to create turnovers. It just feels like CJ Stroud will turn the ball over in this game, and Lou will get the pressure on him. And that's when he kind of melts down. Not to say he's had a lot of meltdowns. He really hasn't. But CJ under pressure isn't the same when CJ doesn't have the pressure. So I'm I'm expecting that even if they don't have Sam Hubbard out there. When you think about the outcome of this game and what is going to happen, the Cincinnati Bengals have won four games in a row. feels like you cannot drop one in the AFC North. It would be huge to get another AFC win because they only have one AFC win on the season right now. It is a very short week for them before they play the Baltimore Ravens. You cannot – overlook the Houston Texans. This is a tough team. They still have a shot at making the playoffs right now. Um, if the Bengals drop, they would have the same record as the Houston Texans in this game. So an absolutely huge matchup for the Houston Texans too. And they're obviously coming off their, their big time win. And they, they believe in their, their rookie quarterback right now. Um, and as they should, but what do you think is going to happen? What's the outcome? Okay. Um, so man, getting back to being six and a half point favorites is tough. I don't <laughs> like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't like last week, but like every analyst was picking the Bengals despite the nearly two point period. Like, come on, somebody else, somebody pick the Bills, even though it ended up being right. I was just like, somebody pick the Bills, please. Uh, Bills are still a good team. Um, yeah, it's tough. I think, I think it'll be a little tight. I do think, man, yeah, yeah, I'll be with you that I, I do think they get a Stroud turnover. Um, but we'll see because. This is one of the situations where you really wish the Bengals would move Trey Hendrickson around and let's get him against a guy that's not Laramie Tunsil, like a lot of teams right. do with their guys. Uh, because if he gets taken away at all, that becomes an issue of like, well, now where you're generating pressure because your second best way to generate pressure were the stunts on the right side of the offensive line. Now one of those guys is out. And maybe Sample or Murphy can still run those stunts around the same level. But if Sam Hubbard misses, that's that would be one of the matchups that I'd target as like, okay, they should have some pressures come from this side of the offensive line. Can DJ Reader bring some pressure? Sure. No tackles, you know, when they bring pressure, it's like two pressures and a quarterback hit. It's not, and you probably don't want them on the field a ton as a nose tackle and pass rush situation. So I think this will be interesting. I I do think that they get they get Stroud to not play the same level he did last week in that Bucks game. Uh, Raheem Morris, he's a he's a wild card. Is it? He's, he's kind of a junk ball pitcher as defensive coordinator. He throws a lot of stuff at you, and it seems like he handled that well. So maybe the answer is not a bunch of pressures, but maybe it's Lou's ability to drop out of those scenarios and put guys in windows that he's not expecting. Uh, but I think this offense will be fine even without T. Higgins. I just when you're missing a guy like Stingley and a guy like Nelson. It's tough. That, that's a tough way to live to have two guys that aren't projected starters to be out there against this wide receiver unit, even if it's not including T. Higgins. So 
I think the Bengals win, and I will go 27-23. So I guess I'm predicting Texans to cover, but if you are a betting person, I would not bet this game. I don't feel good about it. No, no, no. I would stay far, far away from betting on this game. Um, I, I agree. I think it's going to be a close game. I think the Bengals put up 24 again at home, and um, it's going to be 21 for the Texans. And I will say this. My hot take is there's a couple hot takes. They have a flea flicker. Oh, for our guy Trent Irwin, and, and he puts himself right back on the map, and Tanner Hudson in the end zone. Wow! It's a You're not predicting a, a Drew Sample two pack, two nope. back to back games for him. No, if if I do that, Drew Sample is tight end number one forever, and he should be. He should be getting the respect the way he's blocking out there. It's absolutely huge. Uh, but yeah, Tanner Hudson touchdown and a flea flicker with Trent Irwin. I think the defense is able to create a turnover, but I still think this game is going to be close. Um, you know, the biggest thing out of this one is don't overlook the Texans. Get another home win against an AFC opponent. Get ready for a very short week before a huge Thursday night matchup on the road versus the Baltimore Ravens. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting a, a pretty good game. Two good quarterbacks. I think a lot of people are going to be watching this one. They have a great broadcast crew. Um, it's going to be green. I'm losing his name, former Kansas City Chiefs quarterback. And, oh, Trent uh, Green. Trent Green and uh, Kevin Harlan, the best play-by-play -play in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you said flea flicker to Trent Irwin. Do you remember the Cardinals game? And Trent Irwin was a little slow for that flea flicker. I think it might be Yossi if they, if they were in flea flicker. You said that, though. Yossi. And it, wait, you said that, and I tweeted it out that you said it. Could you imagine if that happens and Zach Taylor does that? I'm going to say he listens to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, might as well. You know. Yoshi, Yoshi for the touchdown. Yoshi flea flicker touchdown, sure. No Why flag. Not? And then, and then Irwin will like be solid the whole game. He'll have like fifty yards or forty yards or something, like six catches, and be a a good third show. down, third down guy. Yeah, Zach Taylor, friend of the show. And then Yoshi's only catch will be that flea flicker for like seventy yards, and it'll be unbearable to try to talk about. Dude. I'm going to say it right now, Zach Taylor, if you are listening, because I truly believe he does listen to podcasts. He reads, you know, what's going on and everything like that. He has a burner account on social media. If you are listening to our podcast, one play, the flea flicker, Yoshi, make it happen. But I agree with you. It could be one touchdown for Yoshi. And then Trent Irwin could go off with like a hundred yards and people be like, Yoshi, the flea flicker. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I'm fully, I, I, that's one scenario I can see happening. It's like, why isn't Yoshi playing more? It's like, well, everyone was still good in this game, guys. No. And I want Trent, Trent Irwin to be good. I really do. And, and don't forget about Tyler Boyd. You know, I, he, he came up big. He came up big in the game the other night. Um, you know, he's a third down guy and he helped them kind of secure the dub. But yeah, it should be a fun game. Um, obviously, hope uh, T. Higgins can bounce back with his hamstring injury. Obviously, it's the timeline on that, it's so questionable. You just don't know when he's going to return right now. But as of now, as Zach Taylor's latest update was, he's day to day. Um, and uh, Jamar Chase, it, it, I feel very, I feel maybe too optimistic that Jamar is going to go in this game. Mm -hmm. We're recording this on a Thursday night. We'll find out more. Limited in practice. Ian Rapp report, though, had, has stated that um, according to sources, T. Higgins out for this game and Jamar Chase could possibly go. You just tweeted that as we were recording. So right. we'll see what happens. Um, if the Bengals get another win, I'll be six and three on the season. What's your record? I have no idea. I think I'm one below you because I think I predicted 49ers win, but I also didn't, I, I thought Trent Williams was playing that game. So I'm you're, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. I won't even count that. <laughs> won't even count that. Hey, I'd love to be wrong about a prediction that if I wanted them to, if they were, yeah, I had to give that prediction on Tuesday, I thought he'd play. And I was like, well, I think that'll swing the game. I think the 49ers win. Now I'm not going to say if Trent, or Trent Williams played, they'd win because they got beat pretty bad. Uh, so but fine. you know, I'm still we're striking. Not the it's, not a, it's not a terrible record. I mean, we really rolled with them when Joe Burrow was hurt. So I'm uh, I'm totally fine with that. But you have a really great piece. I think fans should check it out. I know we talked about it a little bit on the defensive side. Miles Murphy, what else is on there? Mm -hmm. Miles Murphy. That's it right now. Um, <laughs> I, it. I might. We'll see. I'm sick. So I, I've thought about writing something because I'm not doing anything. But I've been sleeping like 16 hours <laughs> and I still don't feel great. Well, good news for you. We're wrapping up this podcast right now. So you can get some more sleep. So you'll be ready for Sunday. You can follow him. Bengals underscore Zane. You can follow me at Ellen Diaz Patterson. Thank you as always for listening to It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati.